On today's episode of On The Bench, we have this, my Soviet era top action rotary valve cornet. These are the stamps and the markings on the bell. I can't tell you what any of them mean. Presumably one's a serial number. Um, no idea. But what you can see is the way that they put uh, put the bells, the different parts of the bell together. So originally the stem would have been one part of the bell and the bell flare would have been a separate part. And so when they come to put this part uh, and, and attach it to this part in the manufacturing process they will have cut some little notches in the bell and then brazed them together so brazing is a permanent way to attach two pieces of metal two pieces of brass uh, and you can see the marks from where they would have done that now if you have ever seen something like say the Myrophone video on how they make tubers you'll see the notches that they put in they put a notch every you know centimeter or so it's well notched whereas with this I can see three maybe four notches um, and they're not evenly spaced either so it's the way that they've put this together is just the bare minimum I don't know if that has any tonal effect on the instrument I suspect the level of instrument that this is the tonal effect would have been you know minimal at best but um, certainly something quite interesting we can also see the same brazed seam with the notches in it along the part of the crook that leads to the bell section. There is also these markings up here. I don't know what they are from or for. Um, they look a little bit interesting, but um, yeah, I don't know if that was just part of the manufacturing process. We've got some nice detailing on the edges of the tuning slides here. Um, that's something that you often see in, on musical instruments, but it's one of the key differences between expensive instruments and cheaper instruments is this unnecessary, unstructural detailing that you see. And then in this case, it's just a couple of the lines that have been put in. But on a, a very cheap Indian or Chinese instrument, they'll often just leave this as a simple collar of brass. Or even in better instruments, they don't bother with any sort of uh, detail here. But it's nice that it's included here. Now the valves are linked by these really thin, quite awful uh, pieces of metal, I think it's nickel, uh, that leads to the finger buttons here. Now these are awful, and the, one of the reasons why I don't play this instrument very often is because the alignment uh, of the valve, the, the finger button through to the valve, through these linkages, is such that um, it, it, it sticks. Uh, the, the valve just doesn't want to press down sometimes, um, and it doesn't want to return home, and sometimes this mechanism is quite unreliable, just because of the angle angle of the finger button versus where the valve needs to be. Um, so you sort of tend to bend these to try and get it to work more often than not, but it's still pretty unreliable. When you push these valves down, they rotate along this axis here. So even though the valve stays straight up and down, the, the path of this is offset. So when you push the valve down, it actually follows a bit of a, a sideways curved trajectory because this part pivots around this uh, axle here. It's not very much, um, but it's just uh, an element of how this is built that these valves, the, the, the finger buttons parts sort of rotate as you press them down. We've got this weird orange color on the top here. I don't know what sort of material that is. Um, it looks like some sort of just simple plastic, but I don't know, I've got no idea. So that is a look at my Soviet era top action rotary valve cornet. Thank you for watching.